Welcome to What is Going On's Truth in Medicine show. Each month, broadcaster, author, and media consultant Sandy Sedgbeer and naturopathic medical doctor, researcher, and global health educator Dr. Donise Warden bring you the latest news and research from leading edge science and new integrative medicine to help you outsmart cancer, chronic disease, aging, and more. Here's your hosts, Dr. Donise Warden and Sandy Sedgbeer. Hello, and welcome to what is going on's Truth in Medicine show, co-hosted by me, Sandy Sedgbeer. And by me, Dr. Donise Warden. And this month, we're going to be discussing how you can improve your overall health and your sex life with something that is free. Which is very welcome news, considering how much money is invested (laughs) in the average person's quest for better sex, better health, better looks, better sleep, energy, fitness, and better yet, who would have thought that a key to all of these betters can be found in something that's so integral to our life, we rarely even give it a second thought. I'm talking, of course, about our breath. And in fact, the way you breathe, the way you breathe when awake and asleep can not only negatively affect your looks by altering the shape and the position of your teeth, your chin, and your bone structure, but also increase your weight by reducing your body's ability to burn fat, Spoil your love life by reducing your stamina, your blood flow, and your sexual enjoyment. Affect your heart rate and intensify fear and anxiety and maybe even shorten your life. And the good news is it's never too late to reverse the unhealthy side effects of poor breathing. Joining us tonight is Swedish teacher, author, and founder of ConsciousBreathing.com, Anders Olsen, whose book, The Power of Your Breath reveals some simple yet profoundly effective techniques that have helped thousands of people discover how easy it is to change their lives for the better simply by changing how they breathe. Anders Olsen, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Hi, Anders. Dr. Warden here. And I understand it's currently 1 a.m. in the morning for you, and I know it's midnight for Sandy, so... Talk about dedication. It's going to be a piece of cake for those of us in the U.S. (laughs) And, Anders, you and I met at a Quest Nutrition retreat when you were teaching the group about oxygen and carbon dioxide and the importance of proper breathing. And we were experimenting with some of your novel devices, and we were testing and monitoring them. And I want us to get into that, but first, please tell our listeners what prompted you to start studying your breath. Oh, that was, I read a book, it's called How to Swap Asthma for Life, and uh, I feel, uh, I think already after a few pages I realized, oh my God, this is uh, more important than anything, since we take about 1,000 breaths per hour, and that's about 25,000 breaths in a single day, that has uh, the most profound effect on, on everything in our lives, our thoughts, our emotions, our health, our energy, our sleep. So... I started to play with my own breath after reading that book and doing breathing retraining, and I realized how that helped me reduce my inner stress levels, my worry, anxiety, and that had been the companion in my life for since I was a little kid. It was really a life-changing experience. So since then, you've become a, a real passionate breathing nerd as you describe yourself and as I hear (laughs) you once ran a half marathon with duct tape over your mouth just to show that it's possible to run while only breathing through the nose what was that like well that was actually a piece of cake I mean uh, once uh, you you sort of crack the code and and realize it's not a problem to breathe through your nose it's maybe in in the beginning it's a startup phase, but that's everything we engage in. If I go to the gym, it's maybe a bit tough the first times, and then I start to reap the benefits and at some point even enjoy it. So that was really not that hard. I just had a duct tape, you know, to get some attention. It was really not that hard. <laughs> 
Well, well Anders, I, I, when I was even in medical school, and I didn't know then why, but I was picking up books, you know, the book of floating, oxygen therapies. I was interested in hyperbaric oxygen and ozone therapies and these mm-hmm. kinds of things. But then I, looked, I, I picked up one that was called Rhythmic Breathing, and it was, cop- it was written and copyrighted in, like, 1908. And I remember reading it and thinking, why am I interested in this? But why I started it, it was dedicated. The dedication was to defective breathers. And I remember thinking, what does that mean? Why don't you yeah. tell us what defective breathing is? Yeah, I, I think if we start looking at our own breathing, we will realize it's not really hard to realize that mouth breathing, fast breathing, shallow breathing, unrhythmic breathing, uh, noisy breathing, like, like when we <clears throat> make all, all kinds of noise we make. Actually, every sound we make, that's a breath, meaning that we're moving air in and out of our lungs. And it's not hard for anyone to realize that that is not a good breathing. So instead, we just do the opposite. We close our mouth, we slow down our breathing, we breathe low, and we... Uh, breathe in in a quiet and rhythmic fashion so this is not rocket science it, it's that simple probably it's it's too simple for us to even start paying attention to it when we want to improve uh, our sleep or energy or, or sex life or whatever right we want a big pill you know the uh, placebo is is real the larger the pill the more or the more an injection hurts the better it works and how could something as simple as breathing work so profoundly yeah. but there's a lot of science behind it it is and that we're doing yeah, it wrong actually it is. <laughs> yeah i mean the, the breath can really take you from being really calm and relaxed to being in a state of uh, uh, panic so, so we can go either way. We can go to a state of panic, but we can also go the other way from panic or fear or worry to a re- really relaxed state just by doing something as easy as uh, uh, changing the way we breathe. And as I was astonished when I read your book, The Power of Your Breath, um, I had no idea that the way I breathe has influenced the shape of my face, my weight, my immune system, even my sex drive. I want to know more about that and, and the other benefits too, of course. But sex is a really good place to start. So how does our breathing actually influence our sex drive? Yeah, I mean, it sounds a bit far-fetched, doesn't it? How could that be a connection? <laughs> but. It, there really is. In 1998, three gentlemen got the Nobel Prize for their discovery of nitric oxide. It's a gas produced in our body, um, in the blood vessels and, and all around in our body. And their discovery led to the development of Viagra, the sex enhancement drug. And Viagra works uh, because it uh, increases uh, the amount of the nitric oxide in our body. And around the sex organs, we have a lot of these NO receptors. So when NO comes around and binds to these receptors, it makes the muscles relax so that uh, the penis and, and clitoris can be filled with blood. And the cool thing is that this uh, gas, nitric oxide, is produced in huge quantities in our nose. So when we do mouth breathing, we do not spike the inhaled air with nitric oxide. So we deprive our body of nitric oxide. But when we breathe with, when we close our mouth and breathe with our nose, then the uh, NO follows the inhaled air down to the lungs and out into the to the body. So there is, for example, a research. Uh, showing uh, this relationship where they had one group of people, they had uh, nasal polyps, where it's an outgrowth in your nose, so it's really hard to breathe to your nose, so instead you engage in uh, mouth breathing. And in that group where they had nasal polyps, uh, 34% had uh, reduced uh, sex cell ability. And in the control group, I think it was 2% that had uh, sex cell problems. And when they surgically removed these polyps so that the subjects could start to breathe through their nose, then uh, they improved their sex life. So 
uh, after the uh, removal, only 10% uh, had problems with their sex life. So, uh, yeah, breathe through your nose and enjoy a greater sex life. That's basically the, the message here. <laughs> Right. And beyond that, you know, the nitric oxide and the vasodilation and more blood flow, but it gets us into a parasympathetic state. And to be able to get into there, you know, and to be able to have an orgasm, actually, you have to be into that I'm safe, I'm okay state. And to be conscious, yeah. not just with your b- conscious breathing, but conscious with your, uh, the feeling around you, with your partner, with yourself in that moment, in that intimacy. And if you're not conscious, then it's very difficult to go there, and the breathing allows you to relax and know that you're safe. So I think it's yes. very important and overlooked for sure. <laughs> yeah, I agree. And and we can, I think we can all relate to it. A lot of us, we get lost up in our head. We live our life up in our head. But with our breath, we can basically, it will help us take the elevator down from our head, down into our heart, in our stomach, in our body. So when we engage in this shallow, fast breathing, which is stress breathing, we, we are not present. We are not uh, safe. But when we then uh, breathe low and slow, relax our breathing, we get more grounded. And, and for sure, that's related to parasympathetic and, and also to get a, an orgasm. One of the things that impressed me in your book um, were the visuals. You had some amazing pictures taken by dentists of children whose faces, the jaw, had actually distorted, changed shape because they were breathing through their mouth at night. And this can actually be reversed. How is it that it can be reversed? Well, well, uh, the first thing is that... um, the tongue, the tongue. If we have crooked teeth or overbite or uh, other teeth problems, we, we get braces. That's quite common for kids to get braces. But the tongue is our major orthodontic appliance. We have it with us 24/7, and the tongue is actually a counterweight because we have the muscles in the lips and the. Um, um, yeah, muscles in the lips, they put pressure on the uh, te- teeth. And if the tongue is not resting in the roof of the mouth, there will be no counterweight for that muscle pressure. And uh, hence, we, instead of having a bite that is more U-shaped, we get kind of a, a V-shaped bite. So there won't be room for all the teeth. We may need to extract teeth or they will be crooked. So... The tongue's natural position is to rest in the roof of the mouth, just uh, behind the the front teeth. And uh, that is the main problem, that when we engage in in mouth breathing, the tongue is is not in its correct position. So that means that maxilla is not stimulated, it's not developed uh, properly. And uh, also the, uh, the jaw and the chin may be underdeveloped because their development, they need a point of reference. They need to know how to grow and where to grow. And that point of reference is the maxilla. So the the chin and the jaw get that point of reference when the mouth is closed. So basically, uh, there are a few things. It's the 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 breathing where we should have the mouth closed it is the way we swallow and it's also our posture those are the major things that uh, uh, determines how the the jaw will develop and it, i think it's really so sad that not uh, that the parents don't have this knowledge well i can it understand is, and you're looking how Sorry, go ahead, Dr. Morton. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead, Sandy. I was just going to say, I can understand how that can get distorted with, you know, if a child is breathing through their nose, uh, through their mouth consistently. But Mm -hmm. you advocate taping the mouth. And how is it that just returning to breathing through the nose can actually then reshape that jaw again? Well, to start with, then you have the tongue in its correct position. And since we swallow about 
2,000 times per day. Each time we swallow, the tongue is uh, putting some pressure on the maxilla and thereby it stimulates the maxilla to grow in width and grow forward. Instead, if the tongue doesn't stimulate the maxilla, there is a risk it will uh, be smaller and uh, grow almost backwards. So we get a, a smaller face, uh, the teeth, there is not enough room for the teeth. So that's the major mechanism. The tongue stimulates the maxilla, which stimulates the, the growth of the face. Because the maxilla, the, uh, the teeth, um, the upper teeth is uh, uh, attached to the maxilla. And this bone, the maxilla, it gives shape to the whole face. Because around 80% of the nose is uh, built up of the maxilla. And the maxilla goes all the way up to the eyes. So about two-thirds of the eyes rest in the maxilla, and it goes out to the, uh, the cheekbones. So if, if it doesn't meet its genetic potential, then uh, we, we may end up with a, a smaller, um, uh, more narrow face than we were supposed to have. But, but the good news is, of course, it's more efficient to, to help a five-year-old child to engage in good breathing habits, swallowing patterns, and a good posture, but um, in, in order to develop um, a, a beautiful face. But it is also possible for adults, and there is fascinating research showing that even if uh, your genetic potential wasn't developed uh, as a child, you can still, by giving the, um, uh, the jaw the right uh, circumstances, start to um, breathe better, have a more erect posture, these uh, genes can actually um, start to build, form new um, uh, bones. And, and one thing I, I forgot to mention here, I think a reason why we um, develop these um, uh, narrow uh, faces is because we uh, don't chew the food enough. That's a very important thing. We, uh, first of all, we, we are stressed out, so we don't have time to chew the food. And secondly, the food we are eating is is far more easy to just swallow than, uh, you know, five thousand or ten thousand years ago. And uh, basically, then I'm, if we don't use it, we lose it. Sort of. Yeah, I'm going to hold you right there, Anders. You're listening to What Is Going On's Truth in Medicine show. And tonight we're discussing how you can improve your health, your looks and your sex life simply by changing the way you breathe. We'll be back with more after this break. of internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free AscendingHearts.com More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. My name is Meera Batra, and this is How I Live United. Many families have come to America for a better life. I advocate for these families with United Way. United Way empowers them to see opportunities available. We help them get involved with their kids, schools, and network within the community. My name is Meera Batra. I help families see opportunity and succeed. I don't just wear the shirt. I live it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council.
Welcome back. We are here with Anders Olson. Anders, your, I want to compliment you, and I want our listeners to know about your website. It is amazing. It talks about all of the benefits. You even have a way for them to do a test to test how they're breathing. It's a breathing test. It's, it's brilliant. Um, so I want to make sure that everyone understands that and that if you want to dig in deeper to what we're talking about, about increase in, you know, uh, helping asthma, pain management, endurance, heart, teeth, all the things that we're talking about in the brain, it's on the website. So I, I wanted to make sure that we, we got that out there. But I wanted to ask you, we were, when we got together and I met you, we weren't just talking about oxygen. We were talking a lot about carbon dioxide. And, um, yes. and you know, in medicine, we think, you know, we were taught that's the bad guy. We're supposed to exhale it and get rid of it. But that's not true, is it? No, from my point of view, that's as far as you can come from the truth as possible almost because carbon dioxide is so important. If we just consider the fact that carbon dioxide controls breathing, our, our most vital bodily function, then it must be something more than just a simple waste product that we should get out of our body as soon as possible. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised how how we could have got it so wrong <laughs> right right we're taught at that cellular yeah. level that you know that but but it's incorrect yeah and and, and, and yeah and we you, you share you share that view pardon D- Dr. Wooden, say, you, you share that view I'm, I'm not hearing you anders i'm sorry say it one more time do you share that view that carbon dioxide i do is share that view i do share that view yeah. and, I, and i was learning a lot from you whenever we were together and watching, you know, you had built a CO2 suit, which is like someone gets in an entire, you like the Mr. Stay Puff Marshmallow Man from Ghostbusters. And watching, we were monitoring, we were watching these things when you were working with carbon dioxide. So it was fascinating. So, yes, I think the more studies we do, the more we know, we're going to learn a lot more about this exchange between oxygen and carbon dioxide and just how important the way we breathe and train ourselves to breathe and get that blood, uh, that oxygen from the blood into the organs and the muscles. It's, it's fascinating. Yeah. Because and a lot of you people mentioned, speak, yeah. Yeah. You, mentioned, you mentioned stress as one of the reasons why you first got uh, interested in breathing. In meditation, we're taught to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, and that is supposed to de-stress us and relax us. Is that correct? Because I think what you're saying is we breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Well, you know, the conscious breathing concept I formed, it's more about our daily breathing habits. Uh, Actually, I've trained in, in yoga and I've engaged in meditation and there are a lot of different exercises to achieve, uh, I, I mean, a lot of different breathing exercises to achieve a lot of different uh, results. When, when giving birth, a lot of people, uh, a lot of women engage, for example, in prophylaxis breathing, uh, which is another type of breathing, and you also exhale through the mouth. So I guess those exercises, is, uh, they are designed to achieve certain results. but. I tend to think that it's optimum to breathe in through the nose and out through the nose because when you inhale through the nose, uh, you uh, warm, warm the air, you uh, moist it, and you clean, clean it from uh, bacteria. And then the air goes down into the lung, and in the lungs there are um, 37 degrees Celsius body temperature, and it's 100% humidity. So when you exhale that air, you then rewarmed the nose and you remoist the nose and the bacteria that got trapped on the inhale they are then um, exhaled so, so the, the the nose is cleaned and rewarmed and remoist on the exhale through the nose so if we inhale through the nose the nose gets slightly colder the nose gets slightly drier and the nose gets slightly uh, more bacteria in it so if we inhale through the nose and then exhale through the mouth we kind of over time uh, getting a a nose that isn't uh, operating optimally 
So that's yeah, my I don't take think on that it. But I, I focus. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think our organism was perfectly built to do the way it's, to properly function. And part of that is when you study the lungs and you study that the left nozzle goes to the right lung and you look at this and you look at the immune system and you look at the um, the uh, sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems, it's all connected to that breath. And so I'm with you, Anders. I really think it, we can experiment with different types of breathing, going in one nostril, out the other, all that. But in general, my patients that come to see me, they don't know how to take a normal breath. They don't know how to uh, breathe from their diaphragm. They're taking these shallow chest breaths. They're not oxygen, oxygenating themselves. So I'm literally laying them down and teaching them how to put their hand on their belly and learn how to breathe properly from that diaphragm. They've forgotten. And it's, it's imperative, and it, it helps so many things from pain management to stress. Tell us about that. I want, I want people to understand how powerful this is with pain management because I know when my cancer patients have bone metastasis, and morphine isn't touching it. Breath is the only thing that gets there to that pain. Mm-hmm. Tell us yeah, why. I mean, we already touched a little bit about it uh, when giving birth, right? It's very right. effective as pain management when giving birth. Uh, so it just follows the same principles. And, and one of the things that surprised me the most was when I started to get feedback when people taping their mouth at night and saying, oh, I feel much less pain when I wake up. And then I started thinking about it and realized that if we have our mouth open and we are at rest, we are, we are hyperventilating, which means that we engage in fight flight in the sympathetic part of the nervous system. And we know that what, ha- what happens with our muscles when we engage in fight flight, they, they tend to tense up because we should be able to run away or, or fight. And if we do that while asleep, no wonder we, we wake up uh, with uh, sore muscles, pain uh, in our muscles when we um, have had a tense muscle during uh, our, our sleep. So I think it follows that principle that when we breathe too much, we, we tense up our body. And when we engage in a relaxed breathing, we tell our body and our brain that it is safe, we can relax and uh, then we also relax in our body and we reduce the pain by by just relaxing. So that's one aspect. Another aspect, I think, is uh, uh, the um, electrolyte balance and the water. When we uh, breathe through our mouth, we tend to lose more water. A a Swedish study showed that mouth breathing made us lose 42% more water compared to nasal breathing. And um, the electrolyte balance seems to be affected as well. The, the magnesium, the calcium, uh, which is uh, very important for, for muscle function and, and pain. So they did an interesting study on hens uh, that uh, the, the egg-laying hens, they need to have a lot of calcium in order to produce uh, eggs that, have a, um, that are uh, hard enough in the, in the shell, and they noticed that during the, the summer, when it was warm in, in the barn, uh, the, the eggs got uh, very fragile, so, so they, they, uh, um, they had to do something about it, and they looked at the hands, and they noticed that they were hyperventilating, and because it was too hot, so they needed to get rid of some of the excess heat uh, via um, uh, uh, via their mouth. So they open their mouth and basically hyperventilate it. But that means that they lost too much carbon dioxide. And then the body needs to um, uh, engage in a, a, a mechanism to, to balance that out. And thereby we tend to want to pee out more bicarbonate. And when the, the um, uh, kidneys produce more bicarbonate uh, to be excreted via the urine. The bicarbonate ion needs to bring with it also uh, a, an, a, a positively charged ion, I think it is, uh, like magnesium or calcium. So they noticed that these hands, they lost too much calcium as a 
an effect of uh, losing so much carbon dioxide via the outbreath. So the kidneys then produce more uh, uh, bicarbonate is excreted, and together with the bicarbonate, also a, um, a calcium is uh, getting lost with the urine. So anyway, they gave these uh, hence uh, carbonated water, which contains carbon dioxide. And the the eggshells got harder. Uh, maybe this is a bit of an, an anecdote, but, but I, I think it uh, would uh, be the mm -hmm. same principle for, for humans as well. Mm -hmm. I, I want to talk about sleep, Anders, because um, from what you've been saying is, you know, if you're not breathing properly, it can actually interfere with sleep. Um, I know that you advocate taping the mouth at night. Would that be something that could be uh, a good remedy for insomnia? I think so, but but, but the first rule is uh, because uh, the, the most common question I get is, oh, I won't survive that, I, I will never <laughs> try that, and then I say, well, don't do it. I mean, the whole purpose with conscious breathing is to reduce stress, not <laughs> induce more stress. <laughs> And, I have uh, to admit, Anders, I thought that too. I thought in the night that we all were there, and you all, you sent us yeah. home with our, our our tape. It it was it was. I I don't know how this is going to feel. And I I'm not a mouth breather, but I wanted the ability. Was I going to feel like I was suffocating? It did not. It was restful. I think it's wonderful. And so I want to let our listeners know: don't be afraid. It's not going to kill anyone. <laughs> it's, it's no, it's, it's not be I, because I our respiratory drive. <laughs> Yeah, it's really right. extremely powerful, our respiratory drive. Yes. We, we will yeah. wake up for sure. But, but <laughs> the thing right. is, I think, it is to start then, if you feel, oh, I'm not sure if I want to do this, start uh, during a few evenings to get more relaxed uh, right. about the idea and, and get some experience and get your body used to the new... Uh, the tape mouth. That's, Anders, they can, I mean, Anders, they can also use your rebreather tool. That's conscious. They're awake and they're using that. Tell us about that quickly so that they understand that there's something and exercises they can do when they're awake. Right, yeah. I've developed a, a breathing retrainer, the relaxator, which helps us basically to uh, uh, slow down our breathing and, and breathe lower and increase the pressure in our lungs so we can improve the oxygenation of the blood and uh, also have a more rhythmic breathing, but because it seems like a lot of us, when we, for example, office workers, when we engage in different tasks where we concentrate, we stop breathing. For some reason, we, we just stop breathing or we move up our uh, breath higher up in our chest. And uh, a lot of people report that they um, feel more endurance when they use this relaxator. They, they can go on for longer, concentrate longer, I just got a, a note the other week from an author saying, wow, I've been using the relaxator now for the last three months. It's my new best friend because I, I'm so much more productive when I'm uh, writing on my book. So, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a nice tool to have. You can have it in your car, at the computer, in front of the TV, or yeah. a lot of different Easy. situations. I've enjoyed it, yeah. My uh -huh. patients yeah, have enjoyed great. it, yeah. 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 Anders, um, can you tell our listeners about your um, breathing retraining classes? Yeah, sure. Um, I have this uh, instructor course. I've been trained about uh, 700 breathing instructors around uh, the world. And uh, uh, we, we talk about it, we, we look at our health and uh, our thoughts and our emotions uh, uh, from a breathing perspective. We, we talk then about sleep and uh, um, blood pressure, the heart function, circulation, sleep, uh, cancer, uh, athletic performance from a breathing perspective and see how that often forgotten uh, uh, piece of information is very important as it contributes to uh, overweight or, or low energy. And um, it, it's, uh, the, the course seems to be quite popular, that they seem to enjoy it because we, we take the, the bigger picture approach where we also talk about uh, communication because you can easily tell 
if a person is uh, uh, breathing poorly by listening to how they talk, if they talk fast and, and interrupt, and uh, for sure, that they have poor breathing habits. And uh, um, then you can be a better communicator, a better listener, just by uh, improving your, your breathing habits slightly, for example. So we, we that's a, a six-month course, uh, uh, 12 lessons, two hour per lesson. We do it via webinar. And then they get a homework after each lesson and, uh, and a lot of exercises. I, I like that to mm -hmm. test the, the theory in, in practice. Anders, we appreciate all that you're doing in reminding us of the basics of life um, and tying it in spiritually as well as physically and giving us the science. And just I, I want you to know that we appreciate you. And I want to quote Shakespeare for a minute. He said, I am in health, I breathe. And there are many others, but I want our listeners to know and know the depth and, and how much, and when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about it a little bit more, Sandy and I are, and we will let them know more about you, but we appreciate what you do. Thank you. And as Olson, thank you for being with us today. Thank You're you. listening to What Is Going On's Truth in Medicine show, and tonight we've been discussing how you can improve your health, your looks, and your sex life by changing the way you breathe with founder of ConsciousBreathing.com, and author of The Power of Your Breath, Anders Olsen. We'll be back with more after this break. The cutting edge of conscious radio, OM Times Radio, IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. I am Fidel Mshombo. I was born in a city called the Bukavu in the Congo. We were a loving family, and then, boom! Everything that I had disappeared in a single day. People think that when you are a refugee and they recirculate to America and all your problems are done. They don't understand that that's the beginning of everything. I was not born a refugee. I was made one. It's time we welcome refugee families with open arms. Learn more at EmbraceRefugees.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council. Welcome back. Fascinating conversation and a fascinating topic. And I don't know about you, Dr. Walden, but um, when I first came across Anders' book, one of the things that I said to him is, you talk about improving our sex life, and yet you want me to take my mouth at night. What's that going to do for my sex life? <laughs> right. People don't care about anything else. Well, they kind of do, but that's a big one. That is a big one. That, that is true. But, you know, I... Yeah, I, but seriously, I, I, though... Yeah. Go on. No, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say seriously. I mean, how do you how do you use these principles in your practice? And have you asked any of your, you know, patients if they'd like to take their mouth at night? Right, I have, and you know, it depends on the patient when they're ready to hear something. If they're new to me. Um, you know, I've got to make sure they understand me, that I'm science-based, that I'm also spiritual, and so, I, you know, I've got to be in the space where they are, so I'm not pushing them to an extreme of something they're not ready for. But um, most people get it that they, uh, and when I tell them that, listen, you should be breathing about 10 to 12 breaths per minute, um, and most people are 18 or more, which means they're breathing very inefficiently, they're breathing for three or four people, they get it. And, and then I say, when you learn to calm this down, when you can bring your breath down, 
slower and deeper and do the right kind of breathing, it's going to help your pain. It's going to help you lose weight. It's going to help your busy mind of yours that you can't get under control. You're going to be able um, uh, to help your mood, more energy and endurance. And then they say, okay, and they get it. Uh, you know, they don't even have to hear the science. They, they do believe that. They know that. And then I have them do it with me. And a perfect example, I had a young contractor. Young, he, has a, a, he's a, he has two young children, owns his own business, contractor. He came in. He was a complete mess. And his big things were, I'm anxious. I feel like I'm starting to have panic attacks, and I have no libido. So I, he says, do you have a pill for it? I said, no, but you do. And, and so I said, let's do an exercise together. Will you do this with me? And I was, I was kind of pushing it, Sandy. I didn't know how much this guy, I, I knew him well enough, this patient, to think I could go there. And I said, do you trust me? And he said, yes. And I said, let's do this. And we breathed together. Long, slow breath, doing an exercise uh, up through the feet and out through the back. You know, it was, a, it was a, a guided meditation type thing. I didn't call it meditation. I wasn't ready for that. He was ready for stress reduction. When we got through, he said, ah, I not, with his sigh, with his breath, he said, I know that I can be better now. I can feel myself now. I can feel myself again. So it's powerful. And, yes, I use it in my practice a lot. Uh, it's, I mean, I have to say, I really was impressed when I read Anders book and yeah. um, looking at his website and the wealth of articles he's got there and information, yeah. it's very compelling evidence. I mean, the number of people who have literally turned their lives around. Right, right. And, you know, we're talking respiratory. People come in and they say, well, I have asthma or I've got how many people have sleep apnea and they're on the CPAP machines? How many of them are snoring and nobody can get any sleep in the whole house because of them? Many of these things can be helped. That doesn't mean you throw away your inhaler. It doesn't mean that you put yourself at risk, but it means that you start during your day paying attention to your breath, strengthening your diaphragm, that muscle that has gotten lazy like many of the other muscles in your body, you start retraining. And then at night, if they start taping and learning and teaching themselves to breathe through their nose, they wake up more rested. And we can help many things. You know, we, we look at respiratory disease. Some people say, oh, it's just if you're a food specialist, they say it's food. If it's a chiropractor, you need to adjust, you know, the vertebrae. If you um, are a Chinese herbalist, maybe you have to give them a certain herb. No, um, maybe it's just we've forgotten how the body is designed, how we should be breathing and lying and moving, and it knows what to do. The body is amazing when we give it what it needs and take out what it doesn't, and a big piece of what it needs are these low, slow, rhythmically, you know, succinct um, breaths to help our body be in this state of parasympathetic where it can Heal. You know, I've heard it said that babies naturally breathe correctly. So what That's happens correct. to change that? Right, right. Well, babies are laying down a lot. You know, they're not walking. They're not upright. They're laying down. And so when they lay down, and that's why I have adult patients lay down to learn how to breathe again. And I say, make your tummy go up and down just like you watch a baby breathing. And they get it, the visual. Because they remember, you know, they can see that baby moving. That the back is stable. It's laying on the ground on the, on a bed, so the back can't go anywhere. So the only way it can breathe is using that diaphragm going up. As we start walking, as we're upright, and we start uh, talking too fast, and we start moving too fast, and we get anxious, and we just don't exercise that diaphragm, that muscle, it gets lazy, and we start just kind of doing this up in the chest breathing which doesn't do a lot for us. If you, Sandy, if you watch an opera singer, they, you're not going to see them raise their shoulders or their chest when they take that big breath for that long note. They're using their diaphragm because that oxygenates and brings in more than they possibly could through this little shallow upper breath. So I literally take patients and I put their hands on me because it's the easiest way to teach it. And I have them put their hands on my sides and then on the front and the back, and I do a proper breath. And it feels like a balloon. When they feel how much my rib cage expands, they have this shock look on their face. 
And I said, this is the way the body should be moving and how you should be breathing. My chest is not going up and down. My shoulders are not moving. And I can make that breath go in the front, in the belly, in the back. I can move that, and I can make the sides expand. And they can't believe how much. And I said, now, you can learn this. You just need to practice it. Hmm. Well, answer this one for me. Um, we talk about weight, and, um, mm -hmm. you know, over and over again we hear that breathing properly and taking in sufficient oxygen can actually help you with your weight. How is it then that most opera singers are not slender? Well, probably they just eat too much and don't move enough. <laughs> so really, really. Um, it, it's, it's that. There's something more important. It's their voice and their, their, their you know, I, I don't want to stereotype anyone. There are some thin opera singers. But the other thing is you have to have like a cello has a deeper, bigger sound than a violin does because it's a bigger instrument. So if their body and that, that hollow cavity in general, they're bigger people. They have a more resonance going on. They've got a bigger instrument with a louder sound, just like a violin to a cello. Um, so that's part of it, too. It's just maybe that larger people that are built large, larger to start with just have better sound and become the, the ones that we all know. Hmm. So, you know, we, it, you have to have oxygen to, fat, to burn fat. You can't burn fat without it. And so that's why, you know, we say we should exercise to burn fat. It's this whole oxygen exchange. But I would say this. I think most athletes, now the endurance ones that are going long distances, they know how to conserve, conserve, and they probably do a better job. But some don't. They can do a, a short fast, but it's difficult for them. But I, I teach my patients to do interval training, and we've talked about this on this show before. I'm not talking about an hour on the treadmill. I'm talking about one minute hard, one minute slow, one minute hard, slow for about four to six reps. And if you tape your mouth when you're doing that, you get more benefit. It works better. So we don't have to work as hard or as long. We just need to be smarter. And it was Anders that taught me about the mouth taping. You know, I, I didn't, uh, I knew proper breathing. I knew how to breathe because I, I was a voice teacher at one point hundred years ago too but so I knew how to breathe and I knew that the, the importance of it but I didn't know about this mouth taping and it, it, it's it's um, I think everyone should try it at least once um, and it's an it's a good experiment to know if you're most of the time breathing through your nose if you're panicked when you do it it's because you've gotten used to being a mouth breather and that's not good so do it when you exercise um, and tape when you sleep yeah, now this um, conference you were at when you met Anders, I mean, there were some mm -hmm. pretty big names in the health industry yeah. there. Why is everybody right. so interested all of a sudden then in breathing? Well, they they had heard about Anders' work and his book. And um, the, one of the, uh, you know, the, the owners of Quest said, I want to know more about this because these guys work a lot in the athletic world. They work a lot with the ketogenic world. So whether it's cancer or whether it's athletes, it's the same diet, it's the same regime, and guess what? It's the same way to breathe. So we're always looking for ways that don't cost, that people can do, that we can see benefit, scientific benefit. And, you know, they're about backing research. And so whenever Andrew uh, and his partner brought in this big suit that one of the owners got in, and they blew it up full of CO2, and it did look like Mr. Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. And, you know, we were watching. What could he do? They also had a mask that they put on several of us, and they were we were monitoring our vitals, our, our O2 stats. We were my, uh, monitoring all this. And what was kind of interesting, some of these really big athletic um, you know, that's all, they're uh, trainers or that, that's their life. They couldn't leave that, C, that, that higher CO2 on for very long. But it was interesting. Here I am, older, female, you know, small, petite, and I could hold that CO2. I could go to a higher level and do more of it than they could. So we have a lot to learn. We really do about what does this mean? But I do have a high metabolism, so there's a lot of things to think about. But it was fun because this group is about what do we know right now and what do we need to know and what do we need to study.
and why do we need to put money behind to research it? So what were their takeaways from this and what are some of them going to do about they, this now? Every, right. So we all went to bed the first night and taped our mouths, right? And then the next day during the, um, the seminar, we had some other lectures, but most of it was Anders. Uh, we were using his uh, device that you breathe in. So we were all experimenting with that. So we were either taping or we were using that device or we were over there breathing in high levels of CO2. I do not do this at home, kids, but we were monitoring ourselves. We, I, you know, I'm a doctor. We had other doctors. We were watching. So um, it, it, everyone knew that we need to learn more. And I will tell you that most of the people that were there, I'll bet they're still taping and if not still using the device, very simple, very inexpensive uh, during their day, um, especially when they start to get anxious about something or upset. You just pick that up off your desk, and it makes you exhale uh, more deeply and more slowly, and it calms you right down, better than you know doing many other things that people do to try to relax in the moment. So I, I know, and we've, we've continued um, some emails uh, and I see them come by, and uh, these athletic trainers and these athletes are reporting back with amazing results of uh, following his program. And, you know, uh, Anders' five rules, which are the rules that are tried and true since ancient times, since Sanskrit, you know, is that it's, it needs to, when you breathe, it should be quiet. It should be through your nose. It should be a steady rhythm. It should be slow. And low, low means down in that diaphragm, not high like I was talking about before. And that gets you right out of that fight or flight. And when we talk about cancer or any of the chronic diseases, Sandy, that you and I are, are boosting this show for to say this is who we want. You know, we want people to be able to hear this. Breathing is imperative. And, and relaxation and getting out of stress is imperative for them to heal any of those uh, issues, health issues, uh, that they're dealing with, no matter what else they're doing, it should be breathing correctly. You know, I've been speaking a lot, you know, over the last few years to people who are working with children. Um, they're taking meditation into classes. They're mm -hmm. taking mindfulness into classes. They're taking right. emotional freedom technique into classes. It seems mm -hmm. to me that breathing would be a very good thing to take into the classroom and help the children while they're still very young to breathe properly. Absolutely. And, you know, we've used music um, in that way, too, because music, even if they're not conscious of that it's in the background, it just can calm them down, too. A lot of the teachers will turn that on before the hyperactive, especially kids, come in, calms it down. But just guess what, Sandy? What if they were uh, – then we said, listen to the music and let's breathe. Let's breathe slow. Let's do this together. Those kinds of techniques are teaching them something they can do in the moment. And if they're starting to focus on the wrong things and it's too hard for them to get into their breath, if we connected that with a rhythm from music or a, some kind of rhythmical device, I think children would absolutely eat it up and love it, and it would help them. I'm, I'm sure it would. And, you know, if, if it's true that, Poor breathing is going to be distorting their faces before they even start. I mean, <laughs> right. while right. they're still at school is is the best time to get them. That's exactly right. And well, the best time is to get these parents so they understand. Watch your babies and and you know and start working with your children in proper breathing. That means maybe you get up in the morning, and this is what we tell people all the time, Sandy: is begin your day and end your day in a beautiful state and that means you're going into your breath you're feeling your breath and just like the contractor that i talked about before i said don't just do this for yourself you may need some time moment alone but why aren't you teaching your two-year-old and your four-year-old this right now and your wife why isn't the entire family in the morning beginning your day and ending your day in this peaceful way and breathing together and he likes that idea, and I think they will. And I have many patients that do this. So it's it's not you don't have to be an expert meditator. You don't have to be able to clear your mind. You don't have to do guided. You don't have to do anything, but just just to be able to to focus on that breath. Um, and I and I I when Anders was uh, 
talking about the science behind this, uh, it, it just brought home what we all already know. It's intuitive. Everyone knows. That relaxed yeah. baby yeah. watching it sleep in rhythm with that belly going, beautiful. And we all want to go back to that, don't we, Sandy? <laughs> Remember, we're taking a nap and there's no care in the world. <laughs> we're going to be fed yeah. and our diaper changed. Yep. Yeah. 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 So well, we considering. Can, we can go back there. <laughs> yeah. Well, considering, you know, it's the most important thing, it's the very thing that keeps us alive, we might as well get it right. That's exactly right. And, and you know, I, I, I think that we get so much into technology. We get so much into what's the newest thing and the best thing and something I can buy or do. And we tend to forget basic nature, getting outside in the sun, good clean water, good clean air, um, sleeping well, breathing right. These are things that um, are near and dear to us. Well, that's a wrap for this week. Um, for more information about Anders Olsen, his breathing retraining program, and his book, The Power of Your Breath, visit ConsciousBreathing.com. That's all from Truth in Medicine this month. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer. And I'm Dr. Donnie Warden. And if you want to know more how to live in the healthiest way and not fear cancer and chronic diseases, join us the last Thursday of every month. We plan to educate, empower, and enlighten you with information so new, you may be leading your doctor. That's it from us. The theme tune for this show is from an original...